Boston's North End is largely recognized as the city's Little Italy. This, however, was not always the case. It has at times been dominated by various ethnicities, including the Irish and Jewish. In fact, if you look just above the third floor window on building number four, along narrow Baldwin Place, there's a fading star of David visible on the facade of this former apartment building. This is just one of many subtle reminders of this area's rich history. While exploring the North End, there are a few can't-miss sites. Probably the most popular destination within this area is the former home of Paul Revere that is located along the Boston Freedom Trail at 19 North Square. This brown clapboard with high-pitched roof is actually the oldest home in downtown Boston, having been built in 1680. Revere purchased this house in 1770 at a cost of $12,000. When Paul moved in with his exceptionally large family of 16 children, space was said to be so limited that even the British stayed away. British troops, of course, had their right to quarter in the homes of families. The Revere's, however, qualified for an exemption due to their limited living space. Paul eventually sold this home in 1800, and the home took on a series of different lives afterwards, including a tenement, bank, grocery store, candy store, and cigar factory. The home was slated for demolition in the early 20th century before being acquired by Revere's great-grandson, John P. Reynolds Jr., who transformed it into this historical museum. The museum officially opened in 1908 and provides spectacular insight into 18th century living. Another popular stop along Boston's Freedom Trail within the North End is the Old North Church. This building is the oldest church in all of Boston, having been built in 1723, and is the site of the infamous tale of One If By Land, Two If By Sea. It was from here on April 18th of 1775 that a church sexton named Robert Newman lit signal lanterns in the steeple to notify patriots in nearby Charlestown that, quote-unquote, the British were coming. Upon seeing the two lit lanterns, Paul Revere headed off on horse along with his friend William Dawes to notify the nearby towns of Lexington and Concord of a planned British assault. While visiting the Old North, don't miss an opportunity to check out the hidden gardens along both the north and south side of the church. Along the north side, you can read about the flying man of the Old North Church who leaped from its steeple in 1757. And along the south side, you can explore the multiple serene gardens, such as the St. Francis Assisi Garden, dedicated in the 1970s. Lastly, do not leave without taking the time to relax and enjoy some authentic Italian cuisine. The center of commercial activity is along Hanover Street. However, Parallel Salem Street offers an equal amount of opportunities and actually boasts a bit less traffic. As to your choices, there are said to be more than 90 restaurants in the area, each of which brings with it the local cuisine of a particular area of Italy. Now, most restaurants do not offer dessert, but do not fear. Head over to one of the popular bakeries and grab a cannoli. This is a Sicilian pastry that is a fried pastry dough that is filled with a sweet, creamy filling. I am enjoying mine here in the Paul Revere Mall, referred to as the Prado by locals. Here, you can relax for a moment and take in the history while admiring a large equestrian statue of Paul Revere.